Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. In today's video, for a change, we are going to do something very light, very fun, something that I'm sure many of us would enjoy goofing off to with say, some free time over the weekend or something. Today we are going to install elementary OS onto a VMware ES6i version 7. If you don't know elementary OS, first of all, you should. It's a Linux operating system based on Ubuntu with a completely a, a brand new interface, very unique, resembles the Mac OS a, operating system in regards to overall visuality. It's really designed to allow the average Joe to jump on a Linux operating system and it really succeeds in taking away most of the pain points people have with uh, Linux-based operating systems. It has a built-in sort of an app store that you can install programs without needing to mess around with a Linux terminal. And the same process can be applied to install elementary OS onto a physical device, a laptop or a desktop. Just burn the ISO onto a USB key and install it from it. Now, getting drivers to be installed and behaving in a Linux operating system is a whole different story, but it's certainly doable. Now, the whole point of me doing this video is, is because of my personal use case. I installed elementary, elementary OS sorry, onto an Intel NUC, a Celeron-based Intel NUC. You really can install it on a very low-end uh, hardware. So I installed it and I use it for my daughter's a, a, a learning a, a needs I installed for her from the App Store something that's called Gcomprise. It's an educational software like educational games. And I thought that, especially today, with the whole a, a COVID-19 situation and quarantines and homework and working from home and school from home, something like that can really benefit a lot of us. So we will see how to install Elementary OS onto a VMware ES6i7 version 7. Join me and let's jump over to the computer and see how this is done. All right, guys. So we are installing elementary OS on VMware ES6i version 7. We are going to keep it short and sweet. In order to install the operating system, the first thing we need to do is to grab the ISO file for it and it's completely free. All we have to do is go to Google. First result is the one that we, uh, we are looking for. I already made my donation to the team with a lot of uh, appreciation. So here I'm going to type zero and download and download. This is how easy it is to grab a hold of the elementary OS ISO file and as I said you can burn it into an, a, a, a USB key and install it in a physical a, a laptop or desktop. So I am not going to do the download I already did it in order to, to save time so I'm going to cancel this download and now that I have the ISO I've already placed it in a, in a data store that my ES6i can access. In, this, in my case, it's a network share based, NFS share based on my Synology device. But just as a, as a quick introduction, let's see how we can upload it onto a, a local storage on an ES6i server if you only have this option. So I'm logging in not to my vCenter, but onto one of my ES6i uh, servers. I'm going to storage. Let's select this data store and click on browse data store. Now if I have a folder here that's that's great I can create one or I can uh, 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 or I can use an existing ISO folder for example. I'll create a folder and call it ISO and now that I have the folder I can upload I'll go to the location where my ISO is located. It's right here. I'll double click and the uploading will begin. So that's how easy it is. I don't want to do the process because 
it will be it will be redundant so this is how you upload an iso file any iso file of any operating system to a local storage on an esxi server that's and that's that topic covered let's jump right into our vCenter server and start creating the elementary os virtual machine so this is the folder where, where i want to create my virtual machine i'll right click and create new virtual machine click on next let's call it elementary os Let's choose the, uh, the data store where this uh, virtual machine will live. For now, let's keep it on my uh, Synology iSCSI data store. Click on next. Guest operating system will of course need to select Ubuntu because the, it's an Ubuntu based operating system. So we'll choose Ubuntu Linux 64 bit. Let's give it, just for the, uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, experimentation, two CPUs and two gigabytes of memory. I'm going to keep the hard disk as thin provisioned. We are going to connect it to my lab network. And the network adapter type will be VMXNet3, that's fine. And now we need to mount the ISO file in order to boot from it. So let's choose the data store where you uploaded your ISO file. For me, it's in my NFS folder. Sorry, it's in this data store. And here is my elementary OS ISO file. And I'm not forgetting to check this connect checkbox because otherwise the ISO will not be actually mounted onto the drive. So. That's it for this uh, section of the, of the uh, installation. I'm also as a, let's say, as an added bonus, I can change to enable 3D support. It will make the operating system look a little bit nicer and more refined, but will take some more uh, hardware resources. So if you're only experimenting, there's no re not really a need. Let's click on next and finish. And we are ready to boot up our virtual machine and start the installation process. Now I will speed up this installation process so it will not take as much time on, uh, on the actual video. So let's install on, let's click on L, install elementary OS, sorry. I'm going to click on continue. Now, if you're installing it on a physical device, I do recommend checking this checkbox to uh, let the system attempt to install drivers and Wi-Fi and media related uh, drivers. We are installing it on a virtual machine, so we don't need to, but I do want to install updates during the installation. So we'll click on continue. I'll, I'm fine with, uh, 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 with this option of erasing the disk uh, completely. Uh, of course, it is a blank operating, a uh, blank hard, di uh, hard drive. And I'll click on install now. By the way, the reason we are seeing the screen uh, 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 right now in a not so sharp uh, resolution is because we uh, uh, enabled 3D support and we are running now without a driver for it. So keep it in mind. Name, let's type TMO and for the virtual machine name TMO Elementary Username TMO Let's type a password for our liking. Now it's up to you either to log in automatically or not. I'm selecting to do login automatically. Let's click on continue. And at this point, the installation process has begun. And of course, I'm going to cut the recording right here and resume it once the installation is done because I do want 
uh, to show you a few steps we need to do after the installation and of course we want to view and get familiarized with the operating system itself. So I, I will uh, resume the recording once the installation is done. All right guys, so the installation is completed. The installation process or wizard asked me to restart my computer after he did what he did. And now after the restart, I'm presented with the elementary OS desktop. So let's go over the post installation wizard. Let's click on next, enable location services, that's fine. Nightlight is something that is very useful, especially in physical devices where it at nighttime uh, the light gets dimmer from the screen. Let's click on next and enable uh, keeping or deleting temporary files and trashed files. That's great. Get some apps from the App Store. We'll cover that. Get started. All right. So at this point, the operating system is installed. Again, it right now it looks a little uh, unsharpened and unrefined. That's because we enabled 3D support and still haven't installed a driver for it so after the installation by the way uh, uh, this applies for me for every Linux or especially Ubuntu based operating system I will uh, start by launching the terminal and updating my operating system by running sudo sorry apt get update followed by sudo apt get upgrade let's give our password right here I will click on yes to allow it to install whatever it needs and this updating and upgrading process can take anywhere from two, three, five minutes to even 10 or 15 minutes. Of course, it depends on how many updates you have to install, how many, uh, how many drivers if you're installing it on a, a physical device. So again, I will pause the recording right here and resume it once the upgrading and, and updating is complete. All right, guys. So as you can see, the updating is done. Uh, after the update process is, uh, is completed, I manually restarted my virtual machine. That's uh, always what I do after updating. In elementary OS, it's done right here in the power button. Shut down and you click on shut down or restart or whatever you would like. Now for the last part of, let's say, the installation prerequisite, if we want to have a stable and, uh, and a nice looking operating system, we will need to install uh, what's commonly known as VMware tools. If we take a look at our vCenter, it's shouting at us that VMware tools are not installed on this virtual machine. And we have a very easy uh, and uh, almost a one-liner in the terminal to type in order to install VMware tools or open VMware tools. Let's do that by running sudo apt-get space install followed by open dash vm dash tools dash desktop type the password sorry i had a, a typo i forgot the s it's not tool it's tools let's go ahead and install all right so we have installed open vmware tools what I always like to do is uh, after installation of VMware tools, for me, it's like a driver. So I'll try to reboot and see if it really makes a difference, which it should. All right, so right off the bat, we can see that the system looks better because now it has a video driver. And now we can even upscale our resolution, which we'll do in the next, in the next step. But now we can see that the vCenter is not screaming at us anymore. And we have VMware tools installed. So now if we go to our system settings, 
and we'll go to display click on the gear icon right here we can upscale our resolution let's try something a little bit bigger let's try this and indeed the resolution takes and we can see that we have a very nice looking operating system which is Linux based the next thing that I would like to show is the Ubuntu App Store which is called App Center and instead of messing around the Linux terminal we have a lot of programs we can install right from this App Store and also the updates are uh, brought by this uh, uh, App Store for example if we we'll go to this install tab we'll see that we have still a few operating system updates to perform we'll do them later but let's say for example I want to install something I can go to accessories and browse the entire category or I can search for for example gcomp gcompris this is what I installed for my daughter an educational uh, set of games and one more thing that I want to uh, that I want to show you is uh, um, the beautiful wallpapers that are coming built in with this operating system really nice the settings menu the desk the desktop options appearance we have, I think there are some uh, uh, some themes that are built in but you can uh, control windows animation and transparency and the dock size for example if you like a larger dock so this is uh, how to install elementary OS how to update it how to install VMware tools or open VM tools and how to use the app center and of course there are other built-in programs like photos and a, 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 a video player and a music player and a calendar and by the way see how snappy the operating system is it's it doesn't have almost any lag a, a, a mail application a, a default web browser which I of course always tend to replace and overall the system looks very nice very polished very friendly and I really recommend if you have a, a, a supporting use case definitely give elementary OS a chance over a usual Ubuntu or a Mint or something like that so guys thank you so much for being here thank you uh, so much for watching this video if you haven't done so already please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos come out and of course if you like this video give me a thumbs up see you all in the next video bye bye